Welcome to Kari's Conscious Living. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Make sure that you're laying down, you're comfortable, you're nice and warm, and you're ready to fall to sleep. I have a friend called Fran. Fran was starting a new school. She was really nervous about her new school. She just moved houses, moved to a new place, a new town, and that meant a new school. Fran was not happy about the fact that she had to leave all of her friends behind. And she had lots of friends. Some of her friends were going to stay in touch. They were going to talk on the phone and write letters and maybe even visit. But still, Fran was really nervous about her first day to school. She had a doll, a tiny doll, a doll tiny enough that it would fit in her backpack. Her plan was to take Lola, her little doll, school with her in her backpack. No one would know. It would make her feel better. She decided it would make her feel like she wasn't alone. Lola had been Fran's doll since she was three years old. She was like a little rag doll made of material and all of her parts and pieces were sewn together. She had wool hair sewn on eyes, a smile. She was a very sweet little doll and she meant a lot to Fran and that's why she was taking her to school. The night before her first day of school she was extremely nervous. She didn't sleep oddly at all. She was tossing and turning all night, worried that she wouldn't make friends, worried that no one would like her, Worried that the teacher would be mean or weird or different. She just worried about everything. And no matter what she did, even if she tried to stop herself from worrying, even if she did special tricks like she clicked her fingers every time a worry came into mind. And when she clicked her fingers, it would stop the worry. Her mind would think about the click. And then that would be an opportunity to think about something nice instead. But Fran just couldn't. She just worried and worried and worried and every time she clicked her fingers, a new worry came to mind. Her mum was driving her to school the next day. Fran pulled her backpack in close as if she was literally hugging Lola. She had to go to the admin office first. Her mum signed a few papers And then they walked her to a class. The teacher was called Mr. Simmons and he had a really nice face and a nice big friendly smile and this made her feel a little bit better. As she looked around her class when she sat down at the table she noticed that there was quite a reasonable equal number of boys and girls in the class maybe a few more girls than boys. Some of the kids turned around and smiled at her and some of them completely ignored her. This made her feel good and scared at the same time. It got to break time and she was sat on her own. No one came over to say hello. No one asked her if she wanted to play a game. No one said, hey, my name's so-and-so. This is my friend so-and-so. Do you want to come and sit with us? She sat alone. She started to get really sad and discouraged. She started to feel a little bit angry at her parents for moving house. It was their fault, after all, that she was here in this situation. 
Even though she knew moving house couldn't be helped, they had to do that because of her dad's job. She was still a little bit angry inside and frustrated at the fact that she had so many friends back in her other school and now she didn't have any. She wanted to cry. And then she remembered Lola. She opened her backpack. She didn't take Lola out. She didn't want to be embarrassed if anybody saw her. And she talked into her backpack. Lola was down at the bottom, laying at the bottom of her bag. I'm really scared, Lola. No one's talking to me. I'm so embarrassed. I don't know what to do. Lola said, go try and make friends. You can do it. You're a friendly kind of girl. You have a nice face and a nice smile and you're really good at making friends. Just go talk to people. Fran said, I daren't, I'm too scared. What if they just ignore me or what if they look at me weird? Or what, even worse, they say they don't want to be my friend. Lola said, It's okay, Fran. You're okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Fran stared down at the bottom of her bag, staring at Lola. And Lola said it again. It's okay, Fran. You're okay. Everything's going to be okay. Throughout the rest of the day, whenever Fran felt the need, she opened her backpack, made eye contact with Lola, and she could hear Lola saying, It's okay, Fran. You're okay. Everything's going to be okay. By the end of the first day, she hadn't made any friends. That night when she got home, she told her mum and dad that she hated this new house and she hated this new town and she hated, almost said, she hated them, but she didn't. She really didn't. She loved her parents. And she knew deep down that it wasn't her dad's fault, that they had to move. They had to change towns. But she was just so upset. By the end of the week, Fran had actually made three new friends. Every day at school got better and better. She still kept Lola in the bottom of her bag. And every time she felt the need for some self-support, for some encouragement, just to hear someone who loved her tell her it was going to be okay, she would open her backpack and Lola would say, It's okay, Fran. Everything's okay. It's going to be okay. Those words helped her all week long. Those words helped her be brave and walk up to some of the girls at playtime and introduce herself and start talking about what they were doing. Those words by Lola encouraged her, kept her safe, made her believe that she was a good person and she was sweet and she was kind and she could make friends. By the end of the first week, Fran had figured out who was nice at the school and who wasn't because there's always some kids that aren't very nice. And you know what? That's okay. Because... Maybe those children that aren't very nice have got something going on at home that we would never even dream about. Maybe they have mean parents. Maybe they have a really horrible situation. Maybe they're just unhappy and not loved. Who knows, but... Those mean kids maybe think that they have a right to be mean. 
Fran stayed away from the mean kids, made friends with nice kids, and started to settle in. And by the time she'd been there a month, it was like she'd never even lived anywhere else. She'd made lots of new friends. Change can be really difficult sometimes. It can be really hard and really scary. But sometimes change just has to happen. That's what life is all about. Nothing ever, ever stays the same. Everything always changes. Everyone should have a Lola. A little doll or a teddy or an imaginary friend that says to them all the time, It's okay. You're okay. Everything's going to be okay. Over and over and over again until you actually believe it and you actually feel it. And know that everything's going to be okay. Now, let's go to sleep. Close your eyes if you haven't done so already. Snuggle down, lay on your side, lay on your back or your tummy, wherever you're the most comfortable. Relax your head into your pillow. And let your body start to get heavy and sleepy. You can take a few nice deep breaths. Let your breath start to slow down everything in your body. Your heart gets peaceful and still and quiet. A nice, soft heartbeat. Your lungs start to breathe more shallow and slow down. Your shoulders soften and relax. Your legs get heavy. The big, heavy weights probably been running and playing or dancing, playing football, whatever you've been doing all day long. It's time to let your legs just relax and go to sleep. Your arms are heavy. Just let your body rest, let your whole body rest and relax.